This little circuit I've built here looks at transistor characteristics. Here's my circuit diagram. I've got a nice 5 volt supply, which is off camera. I've got a potential potentiometer, which is simply providing a variable voltage. I'm measuring the input voltage with a voltmeter, which is this one just here. I've got my base resistor, my transistor, the emitter is connected to ground, this is the collector and it's connected to my load resistor, RL, which in this case is a light bulb for visual effects. And I'm measuring the output voltage, which is called VCE. And the reason it's called VCE is because it's the voltage between the collector and the emitter. Now, let's see what happens when we increase the input voltage. So I'll just twiddle the potentiometer. To start with, very little. Now that's expected because we know that a transistor doesn't turn on until it has a base voltage of 0.7. And when I say a base voltage, I mean a voltage between the base and zero volts. So I've only got 0.4 volts in total there, so there's no way the transistor could be turned on yet. If I go up a bit higher, there's my 0.7, and the VCE hasn't really changed very much yet, and the bulb hasn't come on. If I go a bit higher still, you see that VCE rapidly drops, and the bulb comes on. And if I go even higher, VCE is almost zero, and even if I increase the input voltage a lot more, it doesn't really make an awful lot more difference. The bulb stays on, and we go back the other way. Let's start off by considering why VCE is reading 5 volts at the moment. Well, the transistor's turned off, there's no current flowing in the collector, there's no current flowing through the bulb, and if there's no current flowing through the bulb, there's no voltage across the bulb. So this point here is 5 volts, so this point here is also 5 volts because the potential difference across the bulb is zero. 5 volts here, no potential difference, 5 volts here, 5 volts here, 5 volts at the collector. So the collector voltage is 5 volts because there is no voltage drop across the load resistor. The next thing to do would be to look at this on a graph. So here's my circuit again. I've made a change. I've replaced the light bulb with a 100 ohm resistor. So RL is now 100 ohms. And I've changed the display from two voltages to a graph. And on my x-axis is the input voltage. And on my y-axis is the CE. Let's have a look and see what the graph looks like. So we're starting off at zero input voltage. And the output voltage is 5 volts, as we explained just a moment ago. If I increase this, then the input voltage is increasing, moving across this way, but the output voltage, VCE, hasn't changed at all. When we get to 0.7, VCE drops down steadily. It's very linear until it gets to almost zero. Now let's think about what's happening at this point here. So there's enough voltage from a potentiometer to provide current through the base resistor to turn the transistor on so that there's enough current flowing through a 100 ohm resistor to have a voltage drop of 5 volts. So this point here is 5 volts. This point here is 0 volts because the potential difference is 5 volts. We could work that out. I equals V over R. So V5 over 100 is 50 milliamps. If I keep going, what we notice is that even though we make the input voltage higher and higher and higher, the output voltage just simply stays at zero. So at this point here, between here and here, there's no potential difference between the collector and the emitter of the transistor. And if there's no potential difference between the collector and emitter, no matter how much current flows through here, it means the power, which is voltage times current, is very small, if not zero, because the voltage is zero. So we say this point here, this line here on the zero axis, is when the transistor is saturated. This here 
is the linear region because it's a nice straight line and this point here is when the transistor is not turned on and it works symmetrically in both directions and there we go absolutely lovely now let's have a look at a different feature of this transistor we're going to look at how the current through the transistor varies as we vary the input voltage. So I've changed my circuit to be this circuit. I've taken out the wire link here and I've put in two green wires. These go off to an ammeter, which is just here. My load resistor is still the same. My ammeter is measuring I, and I is the current through the collector, so we call it IC and IC is going to be plotted on the y-axis of my graph and V, V in, the input voltage is going to be plotted on the x-axis once again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if we can understand what happens as I increase the input voltage. So I'm going to start going up very slowly. So starting with our input voltage at zero we have as we would expect no current we increase the input voltage very slightly and we still have no current, no reading on the y-axis. We increase the voltage up to about 0.7 and we can see the transistor starting to conduct. We keep increasing the voltage and we get a nice linear rise in current up to 50 milliamps. This is 50 milliamps and the reason it's 50 milliamps is because this is a 100 ohm resistor and a 5 volt supply. So this current is now being limited by this resistor. It's the maximum current that's allowed to flow through the transistor, limited by the resistor. So therefore, increasing the input voltage any further has no further effect. In all of this region, the transistor is fully turned on. The voltage across the collector and the emitter in all of this region is zero. Maximum current is flowing, determined by this component here. But what about this region? Well, in this region, the maximum current isn't flowing. So there isn't a full 5 volts across this resistor. There is some voltage across the base, uh, the emitter and the collector of the transistor. And that's because there isn't enough base current, there isn't enough base voltage to allow enough current to flow through the base resistor to fully turn the transistor on. So the transistor is limiting the amount of current that can flow. And in this section here, the transistor is turned off, so no current flows. So now I have completely rebuilt my circuit. I've still got the ammeter in the collector, measuring the collector current, which is going to be on my graph just here. And I've also changed the input to the circuit to have an ammeter like this, so I'm going to measure the base current which is going to be on this axis of my graph, like that and I've changed the load resistor and the base resistor to be very much smaller and the reason is because it's very difficult to get these readings because the data logger just doesn't have the resolution so what I need to do is I need to make the currents a bit bigger than maybe is sensible so things might not go too well here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at a graph of how the collector current depends upon the base current and we're going to start off with them both at zero so no base current the transistor doesn't conduct and therefore there is no collector current okay if i increase the base if i increase the voltage slowly then we start to get some base current flowing and we get a corresponding increase in the collector current and for that point there that's actually a reasonably linear relationship now, if I kept going, it would saturate because this resistor here would limit the maximum current. But for now, you can see what we've got is a fairly linear relationship for the first part of the graph. Now, how do we write that linear relationship down? Well, what we do is we understand that 
there must be some relationship between the collector current and the base current and that's a proportional relationship because it's linear so what I need to do is I need to put a scaling constant here a constant proportionality and that constant is H F E which is the current gain of the transistor so the gradient of this slope here because IC is on the y-axis, IB is on the x-axis. So the gradient of this slope here is the current gain of the transistor.